So suppose you've looked at your bulletin and you've looked at this, this thing on the screen and thought, my goodness, that's either one awfully strange glass of, take your pick, champagne, <laughs> beer, It's a, it's a very interesting picture that I, I've got for you. It is a reaction that has taken place in that glass. And it reminds me of an aspect of our lives and something Emily Cady talked about. Now, sometime back through a process of prayer and meditation, I got some wonderful, wonderful ideas that came to me about possibilities, changes, growth in my own consciousness. And my first response was, yes, absolutely, yes. I want this. I will no longer live the old way. I will no longer have those limitations in my life. It seemed wonderful and it seemed glorious. There was great joy, uh, a great sense of new hope. We like that, don't we? New hope in our lives. I'm sure you've had moments like that. And perhaps you followed through. And it feels so good and you feel such joy and such excitement. And then it seems as if nine yards of hell drops into your lap. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Yes, yes. You're all familiar with Andres, right? I can remember one time I decided I needed to lose a few pounds and uh, sort of began the process. And it wasn't long before somebody brought me A carrot cake from Andre's. Oh, but if you haven't had Andre's carrot cake, the icing is marzipan. Oh. That's one suggested serving. I'm sorry. Yeah. You make a decision to change something in your life, and pretty soon, all the reasons why you can't pops up in your consciousness. Now, we experience at a time like that three forces. The first force is the new idea. And it's a good thing. It's a wonderful thing. The second force comes from all of the stuff that's in consciousness that's kept you where you are. And it comes up, it comes up to be released, to be let go of, to free you. But it feels like it's stopping you, taking your good away from you. Emily Cady says, keep on, keep on, because after a bit, and all that stuff comes up, all the reasons why you can't, third force comes in. And that's the activity of the Holy Spirit, the creative activity of God that brings the new good into your life. It works in any area of your life. Prosperity, you get. Eureka, I found it. I found the answer to my supply problem. Well, that's wonderful. And then by Jove, you get a little pink thing in the mail from your bank. I remember when I got a cavalcade of those little pink things. Because I was overdrawn and I didn't know it. Actually, I made the deposit, but the, <laughs> you know, the deposit hit after the, <laughs> yeah. And then when they added on the, 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 the penalty, by the time I put the money in to cover it, <laughs> the next check hit because now there wasn't enough because they took the, the pen. It, it, it went on until I had $125 worth of, of charges.
God works in mysterious ways. Just so happens it was one of the banks here in downtown. And the secretary to the president of the bank used to sit right about over there. And she said, oh, Greg, let me talk to the president. They wiped out all of those charges. That was very nice. When you get an idea for something, some change in your health, you decide to do something to promote health. You decide to change your diet to something more, health, more healthful. It's a wonderful thing, and it feels good. And then all the little temptations come up. These are the things that are down in your consciousness that have been keeping you from doing that all along. You need to see them. You need to bring them up and get them out. Work through it, and the third force takes over, and the creative activity of God through the Holy Spirit brings about what you're seeking to do. You have an idea of love and, and oneness and unity with your spouse, your children, your family, your friends, your coworkers, and all of a sudden chaos breaks out. Good. It tells you you are doing the needed thing. You are on the right path. We've all experienced it. All of us have experienced it in one way or another. And sometimes I'll tell you, it's made me say, well, I've just tried heaven. I think I'll just take the hell with it. Because it seems there's too much in the way. There's nothing being presented to me that hasn't come out of me. Out of my own consciousness, subconscious, and I didn't realize it was there. That's why it's coming up. How do you change your life? You change that stuff that's down in there. Katie recognized this process. She recognized this process within every one of us. A process that goes on at different levels. Uh, she called it chemicalization. And uh, since we're whole beings, it happens in mind. It happens in body. It happens in our outer experience. It works in all areas. I've got a video. Years ago, I used to do this myself. And now I found a video, it's just wonderful. I don't have to make a mess anymore. The video is basically, it's this vase, it's this glass. What you see in the glass at this time is the result. Chris. Start that video. This is your glass. Your glass is your consciousness. That's the stuff that's in your consciousness. It's been there for a while. It's dried up. You add a new thought, a new idea. I love the word fomentation. It foments. This is your consciousness on a new idea, a new thought. What's happened? Baking soda, vinegar. The stuff in your consciousness is like the baking soda. It's a base. The vinegar is, a, is an acid. The new thought is like the acid. It's to go in and eat out, clean out the old stuff. Well, they interact. Two things can't occupy the same space at the same time. We see that all the time out on the highway. And nobody wins. But the good thing is, when you have the old thoughts and you get a new idea and you lay hold of it and you allow that fomentation to take place, 
What happens? It comes to an end, and what do you have? In that glass at the end is a whole new thing. Before, you had baking soda. You want to eat baking soda? Vinegar. You want to drink straight vinegar? I think not. What you have at the end are two things, salt and water. Can you drink the water? In a perfect reaction, you could, because it would equal out. The reaction would totally produce water and salt. It's a good thing. That's the same thing that happens in consciousness. You can't have light and dark in the same place. When you're afraid, uh, when you're scared in the middle of the night, when you're all alone, when you hear those strange sounds and you know there should not be anybody else in this house but you, it seems like the darkness becomes a very real power. But light dispels darkness. When you walk into a dark room and you flip on the light switch, there's no great battle that takes place between light and dark, is there? You don't hear screaming and hollering and shooting and all kinds of things, little flashes of light and flashes of dark. No. The darkness is no power of itself. It's a lack of light. When you turn the light on, it goes to every point dispelling all darkness. That's what happens in your consciousness. You need to add the light. And in the process, there's this fomentation, which is bringing out the old, the old negative thoughts, the old limited attitudes, the old concepts that kept you in, in stuckness and converting it into something natural, normal, and good. Water and salt. You can mix lye and hydrochloric acid. You can't drink either one of them. Mm. I used to have to remember when I worked uh, as a teenager in the medical lab that sometimes we'd have to pipette. You know what that is, the glass tube, and you suck a liquid up in the glass tube? I'd have to pipette hydrochloric acid. I have to remember. Draw it up. Don't breathe in. You got to breathe out first. And whew, the smoke would come out of my mouth because the vapors would interact with the saliva in your mouth. Now you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> New rules for lab techs. Yeah, but in those days, you pipetted by mouth, all kinds of things. Yeah, I once got spinal fluid in my mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, when you, when you have this new idea, lay hold of it, grab it, hold on to it, stick with it. Emily Cady gave us an example of what to do. She suggests, suggests that there's a way through not out of this situation, but through it, because you want to get through it. If you want to have the good, you have to get through it. You know, if you'd like to have a, a clean house, I'm sorry, baby, you've got to put the rag on your head, <laughs> get down on your hands and knees, <laughs> raise some dust, and do the work. Just keep on. So she says, in the face of this, and it's our opening statement. Chris, would you put that up? There is nothing to fear. Let's speak this together. There is nothing to fear. Get those words. No thing to fear. It's a natural process. And it, if you want the result, you want to go through the natural process. Just imagine the caterpillar when it gets that impulse and it builds that chrysalis and it's in there and it's saying, oh, I don't know if I want to do this or not. <sighs> What's going to happen if it claws its way out? It's going to die a caterpillar. 
But what happens if it keeps on and is sitting in there? There is nothing to fear, nothing to fear. And what's the reality? Perfect love reigns and all is good. God is love. So perfect love, God as love, as the unifying factor in your consciousness, you and the Father being one, are working together to bring about the highest and the best. But you have to stick with it. Perfect love reigns and all is good. Together, perfect love reigns and all is good. We're so quick to say, oh, that's bad. Get together with friends and we discuss, oh, ain't it awful? Oh, that's terrible. Did you hear what happened to who's he, what's it? I'll never forget, oh, what's her face? Um, this and that, oh, it's terrible. Yeah, it's an awful thing. How quickly we, we go to that side, the dark side. It's a point where we need to know that last line. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Still that negativity. Still that fear and the words that you're saying internally about, oh Lord, I can't, I can't do this. I can't, this will never happen and it's too hard. Stop it. The whole statement together, there is nothing to fear. Perfect love reigns and all is good. Peace be still and see the salvation of the Lord. It's only a process. And the love that is God, that is within you, is going to win. It is replacing the old. It's replacing it already, or you wouldn't be going through it. And if you want the good, you have to keep at it. In, the, in a couple of months, well, three months, we're going to have that wonderful new day of the year, New Year's. Uh, remember the New Year's resolutions? Can you count up how many you kept? Or for how long you kept them? Yeah. Because the first force was the new idea. Oh, I could do this in the new year. I could have this in the new year. And then the stuff comes up, that second force, why you can't. And not knowing that it's a process, we think we're stuck. We think we're victims of this. We think that we can't do it instead of realizing it's coming up to come out. It's coming up to free me so that I can have that new state. That I can reach that place where that whole spirit of God brings it forth into my life. One birthday, back in, back in the 80s, I treated myself. I called Cincinnati, Grater's Ice Cream in Cincinnati. If you don't know Grater's Ice Cream, it's all made in small batches. It's a French process. As you eat the ice cream, you wonder, what's this alien thing sticking to the roof of my mouth? And then you realize, oh, it's butter. The butter fat content is so high, you get the roof of your mouth coated with the butter. And I don't care whether it's chocolate or butter pecan or vanilla. I ordered six pints. Well, that wasn't just for one sitting. 
It was for two. No. <laughs> I put it in my freezer. Well, first I opened a pint. Sorry. <laughs> put it in my freezer. And I started thinking, you know, well, this is, this is absolute heaven. It is absolute heaven. Uh, whenever I go back to Cincinnati, hello, graders. And, of course, there's another one called uh, Aglamises that makes their own ice cream, too, that's practically the same. When you ask folks, which is better? Well, I was at Aglam Aglamises. Uh, actually, Chris and I were back in, in, in 2016. And we were waited on by this young man. And, and I asked him, I said, Wait, well, which is better? And he said, well, I think they're both pretty good. Turns out he was the grandson of, the, of Aglamises. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, nothing like being waited on by the family, you know. Absolutely outstanding stuff. But it's amazing. The moment I said, you know, I should, I should ration this. Get that pint and go hide in the other room and eat it by myself. Oh, it's amazing how the stuff that comes up and says, no, you can't do that. I used to jokingly laugh that during ministerial school, sometimes I'd come down on the weekends into the city, and on the way home, I'd stop at Winchell's Donuts. I'd buy a dozen donuts. I always take them back, you know, to my room. I'd have one. I'd have two. I'd put them across the room. I'd be watching the late night movie or whatever it was on, on broadcast TV. I look over there and pretty soon I'm over there getting the third. The next thought is, I'll just walk over there and get the box. That's coming up to tell me you need to make some choices. You need to stop this and you can stop this. When you have the thought of stopping it, keep going with it. When you have the thought of change, keep walking with it. Don't stop. Stop means go back to the same. Now, not only do we chemicalize in, in our thinking, in consciousness, but it happens in our lives out here too. Sometimes when you decide to make a change in your life, some good change, all of a sudden, people don't like it. People don't understand it. Well, what's wrong with you? Why are you doing that? Who told you that was a good idea? Sometimes you have to let go. Sometimes you have to change your playmates. If, if it's something that you would really desire, do it for yourself. They, don't, they can't live your life. You follow the Spirit of God within you. I've had lots of people happy to lead me down a, a fancy path to the dark side. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on, let's do this. Let's go there. Uh, no, thank you. Don't need that. Understand that chemicalization is natural. It's safe. It can seem scary if you don't know what it is, what's happening to you. But when in the process of seeking heaven, hell seems to break loose, it's part of the process. It's part of the releasing and letting go what's been holding you to that old state. What's your statement? There is nothing to fear. Together, there is nothing to fear. Perfect love reigns. And all is good. Peace, be still.